you, buddy. <laughs> Welcome to today's installment of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs. Thanks for watching. We have the 03 Pontiac Grand Am here, the GT. Uh, and uh, if you watched the last vlog, we finally for sure diagnosed our ABS problem. There's an open circuit with this particular speed sensor and when we did our investigation we found out that one of the wires completely corroded off of the connector. So that would make a lot of sense. Um, so I figured we're gonna try something today. Um, so this being a GM car, the speed sensor is integrated into the wheel hub. And I am still not sure if I wanna try to change this hub out. Now, it is a bolt-on hub. However, where I live, um, there's a chance that this hub may not come out easy, it may not come out at all, I don't know. It's, it, it's gonna be probably a difficult process, even though it sounds pretty simple. Man, I'm sweating already. It's really not even that hot, there's just a lot of sun. Whew, and anyway. So, I am going to try to fix the wires by pretty much splicing in a new connector which I have to go get yet so we are going to take a junkyard run and uh, cut the wires off of another Grand Am hub the, the, the appropriate thing to do in this particular situation is to replace the sensor completely um, because the wires that this uh, that the sensor uses I mean it's a very sensitive um, it's a very sensitive sensor and the wires themselves are even you'll see they're kind of twisted around each other and that's to kind of block interference from other possible sensors or any other frequencies that may you know trigger uh, like a false reading or something so the appropriate thing to do is to replace the sensor. In this case, replacing the entire hub since the sensor is built into it in GM fashion. But this car is for experimentation. <laughs> so even if it doesn't work, I mean, there's still the possibility of replacing a sensor or a, a hub. So. It really doesn't matter to me at this point, but uh, I am kind of curious to see if we can fix it um, by just splicing in another connector. This is also going to depend on how badly corroded the wire is. So if, if we're able to cut off, and there's not much wire to cut, so we have to be very careful. But if we if we do cut off you know, a nice small portion of wire and we see that there's not a bunch of corrosion under the uh, the coating, you know, the insulation, then maybe there's a possibility that we could save it. Again, I didn't really feel like bringing up the loud electric gun, so we're just going to do this. Um, so, like I said, the best thing to do is to replace the sensor or hub completely because even if this is fixed and we do get readings there's a chance that maybe it's gonna start throwing other codes because maybe there will be interference from something else or even adding new wire you know might cause some issues I don't know but we're gonna see we're gonna we're going to take a chance. I 
I haven't driven this thing since uh, at all since the last vlog. So I don't think I'd have. Doesn't really look like I have. <laughs> she's she's been sitting. I'm pretty sure. So I'm not sure exactly how well you're gonna see this, but let me see if I can pull it. Oh, it came right off again anyway, so maybe I did drive it. So yeah, there's our broken wire, clearly. And uh, yeah, see this is, this is literally all the wire we have to work with on the, the um, on the hub side. Um, I should have jacked up the other side of the car and turned the wheel. I might still do that because that might make this a little bit easier. We are on the jack stand. As you saw, the car kind of went down a little harder than I wanted it to <clears throat> on it. Um, so um, I cannot unplug this one handed, I don't think. Maybe I can. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so there's not much wire there at all to cut into and splice. Uh, so it's gonna be tricky. And like I said, if it really if it doesn't work, we're not really we haven't, we're not really doing any additional harm because I mean this sensor is already not reading. So what difference does it make? So yeah, this this helps a little more now that we have the angle. All right, so man. What I should do, I should just go by the connector anyway. Um, because to be honest, I really don't want to cut this. Because I'm pretty sure those wires in this are not colored. So we need to know what side goes to what. Um, I can try to see if I can cut the sleeve off a little bit so we can see the wires anyway. I cut away a little bit so we can kind of see the wires. I don't really want to cut too far. I don't want to rip that last wire out of that thing anyway. So, um, and it's like a it's like a rope type fabric, you know. So, once we cut that off, we're gonna cut it off. Um, so anyway, all right. So yeah, we're just gonna go out to the junkyard anyway. We're gonna cut off another connector and as much wire as we can. And then, then we'll mess with it once we get back because this way I don't have to, I don't want to worry about, you know, which wire is going to go to, to what. And then we can look at the one connector to side by side and make sure we're lining up the same type of wire and, you know, that kind of deal. So, um, it's going to be tricky, but we're going to try it. If it don't work, oh well. Let's roll. All right, here we are. Man, it's been almost a year since I've been to the junkyard. Last time I was out here was for the uh, Saab. For the, um, alternator. All right, no grand dams yet. Which is surprising. Oh, there's one right there. This is also still yellow jacket season and wasp season, so. Okay. Um. Hmm, that's pretty gross out in there. All right, let's go to the next room. Honestly, I could probably take one off of like a Malibu or any other GM, really. They're probably all the same, but it's best to just stick with the, uh, obviously the original make model. Trim, if applicable. Just to play it safe. Riata. Hmm. 
Uh, all right, let's cut. You see a couple of aleros over here. Those could also probably be good bets. Well, the wheels are still on this one. That's very rare to actually come down here and have the wheels still on these cars. are so short. I really don't know if this is going to work. Oh man, that thing's stuck on there. Huh. I really didn't bring any screwdrivers with me. I only brought my cutters. Um, we'll come back to that one just in case. It feels really good out here when the sun's not beating down. I see a tech. Oh, oh one. What is this? Ew. Ew. That's gross. Nothing living over here. Well, it really didn't look like it was in bad shape. Must have been a uh, the same GT trim mine was. Same disc changer, dual climb, dual zone climate. Cooler's gone. Must have been the exact same trim. Oh, man, I miss my tech so much, guys. So much. There's a Grand Am. Nope, that, that one's way too short. Uh-oh. We're at the end of the GM line. All right, let's take a walk down this way then. Um, probably go back to that Alero, and uh, I'll have to fight with trying to get it off the uh, the clip. But that might be our best bet. I mean, like I said, I probably could use any GM, really, but I'd rather stick to something closer to that platform. What? Uh, all right, then. Nothing down here. Cars are all tight together. Makes me nervous because you never know if you're gonna walk by a car with a nest. Cut 
through here. That thing looks like it got burnt from the inside. That sucks. Go back to that Alero, use that one, see if we can make it work. Man, I just don't understand the. Oh man, I mean, that's disgusting. The rest of the cars, the rest of this body's in pretty decent shape though. I mean. I wonder what the mileage on it was. It's here for a reason. Alright, so that Alero is down here, so I'm going to cut and try to fight getting that clip undone, and I think we'll just take that one. Alright, this is it. This is all I was able to get off of that, that harness. I mean, that's up to the hub itself and I had to pry the clip off of the connector because it would not come out of that so whew, that's not much doable maybe but that, that's not as much wire as I'd like to have before we leave let's admire this 2000 Adlero 2000 Alero and thank it for at least attempting to help us out same engine obviously the 3400 that my Alero had mine was a 99 this one's got the wing it says the 2000 Um, where are you? Six of OO. Yeah, I guess it's on the cups of 2000. It's actually pretty, pretty decent in here. It's pretty clean. Again, kind of wonder what the mileage might have been. Keys in it. CD and cassette. Oh, it's got the manual, too. I have an Alero manual. I have two. I don't think I have 2,000. I might go... I might go look at that. We might... We might buy that and take that with us. Yeah, this one's... This one's pretty clean looking on the inside. What a shame. Yeah, the airbag cover ripped off a little bit there. Go see if uh, we can get into the other side there. Hopefully, there's nothing here. Oh, I don't think I can open that door. There we go. Ooh. Ooh. You know what? Yeah. Why not? I wish the portfolio was with it. But it's it's not in there. Yeah, we'll take these. Add them to the collection. It's been a while since I bought a manual. Uh, uh, there we go. Alright. 
This first Alero that we looked at was an O2, by the way, and it's in a lot worse shape than uh, the one that we pulled the sensor off of, or the connector. It's a real shame because this one actually had leather, but it is all moldy and it's got moss. Been exposed to the elements. It's just way moldy in here. What a shame. Oh boy. Poor girl. But this one still had the airbag cover. Interesting. I happened to be strolling across the Chrysler area just for kicks. Got a first gen Grand Cherokee Laredo, like a very first gen, very early model. This thing's all blown out over here. What was the mileage on this one? I can't really see. <sighs> Two nineteen nine one three. Wow, stereo is gone. It's a ninety three. It's the first year. Okay. Got a temp tag in the back too. It is all rotted out over there. Let's see. Oh, there's a bunch of weeds and stuff. Yeah, she's all. Wow. How sad. How so very sad. From the looks of it, it had the 5.2 liter in it, the V8. Wow. All right. This is a newer 200. <laughs> Wait, which one was this? 15, 2015. Well, the manual's with it too. Hmm, maybe. I don't think there was a full manual. I think they're user guides at this point. Yeah, user guide. Let's see. I don't really want to set my stuff down in here, but. Oh, it's all wet. Or it was all wet. Uh, sad. Garbage. No good. There's also a lot of PT cruisers down this row here. I don't know why there's a fire hose here. Fire hydrant hose. PT cruiser. PT cruiser. Crispy town and country. PT cruiser. PT Cruiser. Wow. This reminds me of what my dad had. My dad had a Dynasty for a short time. Pretty much the same car. There's that old school 3.3 liter. So 
So this is probably a New Yorker. Oh, Fifth Avenue. 1991. I guess it is a New Yorker. I think Fifth Avenue was the trim. Uh, there's nothing in it. <laughs> wow, nothing at all. Just a lot of heat and discomfort. Got a 2000 Dodge Grand Caravan. Keep in mind guys, when I was younger I liked a lot of these old Chrysler products. It's a sport. Oh, I, that fabric I bet is so soft still. Something about the Chrysler fabric from this time period was just so... So soft. Uh, it too had a V6, uh, also the 3.3. There's a there's a wasp. So we're not going to go too far over there. Oh, that's sad right there. That's probably why it's here. That rusted out shock tower. Yeah, what else can I explore? I was kind of hoping to come across like a really, really old Voyager or an old caravan like I did the one day I was here. I haven't really seen any yet. They might all be gone. Ooh, is this an old Avenger? It is. Bad engine. Hmm, how much further do I want to walk? Here's another old caravan. Also a sport, what are the odds of that? Thumbtacks. <laughs> uh, bo glove box is open. There's no manual in it. I uh, wonder what year it is. Uh, also 2000. <laughs> Doors off the hinge. Wow. 1985 AMC Eagle. I bet this thing's got some wasps in it. Wow. AMC Eagle. Ugh. the mileage see if we can. can't really see it what is that eight six eight eight so eighty four thousand ish could be 184 kind of doubt it <laughs> probably is 84 and that's it I don't know guys, I think I'm gonna get ready to go home here. Try to finish this ABS thing. We're getting pretty much to the end of the line anyway.
Hmm. Yeah, this is the last row here. Yeah, didn't really see anything as old as I was hoping. Here's an old Concord. 97, it's all kind of gross, I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> Intrepid, similar to my sister's, the one that she used to have. Fake taxi. I know. Wow. Okay then. 2000 Intrepid. Looks like everything's still in it for the most part. Is it the manual? It is! Hey, 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 that's so thin. We might take this with us too, why not? I'm spending more money than I really wanted to, to be quite honest. <laughs> but sure, we'll grab this one. Oh wow! Another 5th Avenue, a lot older. What year is this? 86. God, I forget how much the manuals are here. They're usually like three, five bucks. So it's not like I'm spending a whole bunch of money, but I do have a vacation coming up and I need all the money that I can save. <laughs> in the next couple of weeks. What's this? An O2 Intrepid. I wonder if uh, the manual's in this one. It stinks in here. No manual. Ah. Do I have less of? I know I have some Grand Cherokee manuals. Wow, there's a elliptical here. <laughs> it's amazing the stuff that you just find randomly sitting across the junkyard aisles. Yep, yep, yep. Another old Grand Cherokee 96. I have a 96 manual. Oh, wow. Hmm, I saw a shadow of something flying, so I got kind of nervous. I think it's that thing. Dragonfly. 97 Chrysler LHS. Man, these things are huge. What's the mileage on it? Can't see the screen. I think I'm zooming in on it. Can't tell. Okay, well, like I said, I couldn't see. Got a 98 Durango here and it looks like it's in pretty bad shape. <laughs> what? There's like an aquarium or something in there? I was gonna see if the manual was with it. This is next to that Grand Cherokee actually that we were just looking at not long ago. I'm afraid to open this door. Ugh. 
Well, there's no manual in it anyway. Gross. It smells so bad in there. Just for kicks, there's an old Chrysler 300 here also. And I kind of wonder if the manual's with it. Oh, this came from a used car lot. It's got the sticker on the window. <clears throat> uh, no brake. Oh. Because I know this is like the sibling, affordable. This is the sibling to the Intrepid. It's an 04 model. So to have a manual from both variants of this car would be kind of cool. Something just flew out of there. Proceed with caution. Uh, well, there's no glove box, but the uh, intake is in here. <laughs> wow. Darn, that would've been kind of cool. Uh, this is only 300 I noticed. So I'm gonna say it doesn't have it. Oh, the glove box is right there, though. <sighs> no, I'm not digging around it. Never mind. Can't see in there. Boo. Alright, we're crossing over to the Ford side. There's really not too many Fords that I want to kind of go through, if I'm being honest. I see this uh, yellow Focus down here. Wouldn't that be sad if that was the one that we filmed? Like years ago? It's not. <laughs> Very similar. Uh, same year though. Looks like it was wrecked. Aw. Engine's still here. <clears throat> What's the last of the VIN? 7769. That is not the same as the one that we filmed for Mike's Vehicle Spotlight. So that's good. <laughs> That would have been really sad. Old Expedition. Old Explorer. Old Mustang. Really old Mustang. Probably late 90s, early 2000s. Ninety-nine. Yep, first year for this gen. Was this considered a? It may have just been a makeover. Maybe not this entire generation, but I don't know if they actually considered this version its own gen, or if it was just a makeover of the early '90s, mid '90s model. They are quite similar, really. I guess. So, but I don't know. I did it one time, but I don't remember. Oh, this poor escape. I miss my escape. <clears throat> I wonder if I'd still have it today. If it was paid off. It would have been paid off by now for sure. Oh, here's another one. This one don't look too bad. Window's gone. XLT, black cloth, 2008, first year for this particular, for this generation. Looks like it got popped. V6. Oh, it had different color accenting uh, on the interior. Similar to that of what the uh, Mercury version did. <sighs> Alright, 
right, we're done. I'm gonna go home now. Whoops. There we go. All right, guys, we're back. Went and got some food. Got a cheeseburger from a place that I'd never got a cheeseburger from before. I was a little disappointed, not gonna lie. So anyway. Oh, man. This is, uh, this is gonna be very tricky. All right, so I'm gonna cut this off now, and I have a knife to try to cut through the rest of that insulation there. And it's probably gonna be a little hard to film, but basically I'm just gonna try to get these together into that, you know, these are the smallest butt connectors that I have, so that, that should be good enough. And, uh, I don't know, I guess we're just going to see if, uh, if it's going to work. So, here we go. Fingers crossed. Well, you know, hold on, so what I should do first is I, I don't want to lose which wire is which. So, hold on, let me just cut through this insulation first. Try to anyway. Oh man, I hope I don't pull that out. That's so sketchy. It's so sketchy. I'm gonna try to do the broken wire first. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna cut a little more of that wire off because I obviously don't want the corroded end. I'm going to try to cut it very, hopefully, like that little bit there. That looks like good wire, so let's try to carefully get rid of some of the uh, sleeve. Oh, this is so sketchy. <laughs> There's no room to hold anything. Alright, so this, <laughs> I got this on here, so it's it's crimped in there already. I was able to kind of pull off just enough wire, so it should be making contact, and man, that was tough. So uh, now I just got to get the other end, crimp it, uh, you know, and then um, <clears throat> shrink it down, then I can cut the other end off and do it to that side also. <laughs> Fingers crossed, again. All right, so we got the original broken side hooked up. There was just enough wire on both ends to crimp in there and I just uh, went ahead and melted them down, so that's it. That's it for that one, so now we can work on the other wire and uh, hopefully this hopefully this will work. All right, so they are both on there. If this does not work, I know exactly where it went wrong because the body end or the hub end of the last wire I was trying to hook up, when I crimped it, the wire started to pull out of the crimp because um, it was very, very tough to get the pliers in through there. But um, anyway, we shrunk them down. They seem to be connected, so I'm pretty sure a quick way to find out if this is going to work or not is if I go get the keys, we plug the harness in, and see if the ABS, the service vehicle soon, and traction control lights are all off. Because that'll obviously mean that the... Uh, the module can see communication or a circuit that's actually working through this hub so I'm gonna let those cool off I'm gonna run in the house real quick get the keys and uh, that'll be a, a fast way to tell if this is gonna work or not yikes this is sketchy oh I have to delete some camera memory all the wheels
wheels in the way. All right, so here we go. Ignition on. If all three of those lights go out, I think we're gonna be okay. Oops. <laughs> and they did. <laughs> wow, I thought for sure that one, that one was really sketchy. Did not think there'd be connection. All right, so, sweet. Okay, so. I guess that's it. Uh, so we're gonna tape it up. Um, I might try to get this thing off of this this old connector so I can at least try to get it to sit in the, the bracket there. But I'm gonna try to tape all that up as best as I can. Then we'll get the wheel back on and we'll use the scan tool here and see if the readings are gonna be the same as the uh, other three wheels. This is like the worst electrical tape that I happen to have. I don't know where the rule came from, <laughs> but um, I couldn't find the stuff that I usually use, so I found this unopened roll in the house somewhere, and uh, it is like the worst. So that's probably not going to stay, and that's as best as I could tape it. I could, I, it's hard to get your fingers down near where the actual hub is. Um, and uh, the rusty clip won't hold anymore, so it's, it's kind of on there, but I, I kind of put some twist ties there because, well, I can't find my zip ties. So this is something I'm definitely going to have to check back in on after a little while if, if this uh, even holds up, you know. I might try to get a little bit more tape down in here, but that's a really, really tight spot. But um, anyway... Let's get this wheel on and see if uh, see if it'll even read right. Okay. How's that look? All right, they're still off. The wheel was still turned when I put the wheel on. I did torque the wheel down, so. Okay, we could turn the wheel. Oh, look. Look at that. Darn. All right, but this. So the circuit, let's see, did it, uh, okay. All right, so it's fine. So right now the circuit must be attached or, uh, you know, not open, it's, it's closed. <laughs> Darn it. All right. You know what? I need air. Sorry, guys. All right, let's hook the Altel up. Let's see what she does. So, if anything, we kind of got it to act the way that it was for a long while. Um, by having the wheel, when the wheel is turned, causing the problem. So let's see what she says. Lights are off now. So whatever codes are in it are probably history codes. Darn, I'm so bummed. I thought we had it. Alright, so as of right now, they are both history codes. We have a C1221 left front wheel speed sensor input signal equals zero. That was a history code the last time we actually looked at these. And C1232 left front wheel speed sensor circuit open to shorted. That's the one that we 
had uh, that was consistent, consistently current. <sighs> All right, so let's let's erase these real quick. Okay, no codes. Let's back out of that real quick. Let's see what this does. So when I do this, this must be tugging on something. All right. So read codes. Left front wheel speed sensor circuit open to short it. Okay, so it says history. So that's weird. I wonder if we back out of this. Let's turn the wheel again. Let's, let's leave the wheel here. Let's read the codes. Still history. Okay, let's erase these codes. Interesting. Okay. So they're gone. <laughs> I'm all the way to the right. Okay, they're back on. Read codes. <laughs> it comes back as a history, so there, it must be a really, really short-term open. And maybe by the time the lights come on or the wheel has cleared that spot, it must it must fix itself. All right, so we erase them again. I'm gonna continue to turn the wheel back to being straight. Now, it's not all the way to the right right now. I'm gonna go to the left. Okay, so it doesn't do it to the left. I'm gonna go to the right again. So there must be something about that harness. And it, I don't think it's the hub side. I think maybe it's the body side. I wonder if the body harness is like stretching when this wheel is being turned. Nothing. Wow. Read codes. Nada. All right. See, this is why it's pro it's it's better to just replace the entire hub or wheel speed sensor. Trying to do it this way with the wiring and stuff, you're not guaranteed a fix. Um, but since I did have the wheel turned all the way to the right when we were working on it and repairing it. Trying to plug the body harness in, I did notice it's really tight. It does not reach that well. So I wonder if it's if it's binding, if the wiring harness is binding. Uh, so we'll see how it does on the drive instead. So we'll go to do our live data. We're gonna get all of our wheel speed sensors up. And we'll see if it drops out any. I just want these five here. And of course, the one we're looking at in particular is left front wheel speed. I can maybe even do like a little graph. <laughs> so if it drops out, we could watch it kind of go to uh, zero. So that'll be fun. All right, let's, let's take it out and see what it does. All right, so with the graph going, it does look kind of weird, but um, the this, where it says zero, that's obviously gonna be the speed and all these will be the same. It just moved over some because of the way the screen's set up. So, we're backing out of the driveway. Make sure there's nobody coming. I don't need that on my conscience today. And uh, I'll try to keep the camera as steady as possible also and hopefully this doesn't really move around. Um, all right, so I'm going to go 
this way. Turning the wheel right. Back to straight, all right. Huh. All right, so I, I'm not, I can't really look because I'm driving. But from what I can see, it looks like they are all reading pretty much the same. Which is good. some stop signs. I got one more stop sign over here and then I can kind of stay consistent for a little while. When I get to the end of this road I am going to turn right so we're going to see if we lose our wheel speed signal. But my guess also that one pin actually now that I think about it, the one terminal on the body harness did have a little bit of corrosion in it. So maybe there's a chance that that connector, if it's being pulled or if it's getting you know, snugged up on something while the wheels turn to the right, maybe it's not making good contact with that particular pin. So I should have bought some uh, terminal cleaner, but uh, I did not. But so far, it looks like everything's still pretty consistent. Keep in mind that the scan tool has to like interpret the data. So if, if they're all not the same for like, you know, a small period of time, you know, it's got to interpret all of the, the changes. But it looks like they are all pretty consistent with each other. So that's, that's a good sign. All right, so we're coming up to the end of the road. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn right and see if we lose our, our signal. Okay, here we go. Doesn't look like it. <laughs> wow, this is, that's very bizarre, but I, I wonder if it has something to do with that. I guess the good part about all this is we, we pretty much did correct the open, you know, and it appears to be working for the most part. I'm gonna go ahead and make another right. Let's see what this does here. I'll try to make it a little bit sharper. And nothing, wow. then I don't know guys maybe it is kind of safe to say that it's fixed but I mean if if that's all it's gonna do not no like I said the best thing to do is to replace the entire sensor with a nice new fresh wiring harness and connector this like I said was just kind of an experiment because I wasn't sure if it was even possible to fix that with with how small the wires are you know um, so if anything, it's more of a temporary solution and that's fine. Um, but it is nice to see that for the most part, at least at, at the time that we're doing this, um, it is working and it's continuing to work. So, I mean, if, if I happen to take a right turn one of these days and it pops on, oh, well, because <laughs> it seems like as soon as the car is started, uh, everything is back to normal. So it... Whatever open occurs is a very, it must be open for a very short amount of time. Uh, so quick that by the time the wheel is, is in some correct spot or if the, um, even by the time the, the ABS module reads into the situation, the, the contact between the wire you know in the circuit must already be uh, redone must already be there so it's very 
It's very weird. But I, I do wonder if it has to do with that body harness maybe being so tight when we go to make that right hand turn. And like I said, that's what it was doing for a while before the uh, open became a permanent thing, before the wire actually ripped out of the thing. So I don't think it's on the repair side that we just did. It is probably on the body side because there's a lot of slack in the wires now on the hub side. I don't think anything is being pulled out of those connectors or terminals on the side that we repaired, if that makes any sense. But we are still reading perfectly fine. So I'll take it for what it is, guys. This is this is fine with me. But if you're attempting to do this yourself, if you watch this video and you think that, you know, pay attention because I mean, obviously it may not be a 100% fix. Um, but for me and this car, uh, at the time, at this time, I'm not going to worry about doing the hub quite yet. So I guess we'll just we'll just have to see how long this holds up for. All right, guys. So uh, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Well, look at that. We made it back, and this thing is still making. Uh, Making contact. We'll check to see if we have anything pending. Nope. So all of the readings are, are good. It's not detecting any weird readings or anything. So I think we are... I think we're just going to let it go as is. So this was quite an eventful vlog, actually. <laughs> um, because we went to the junkyard, of course, and uh, ended up doing some manual buying. Um, didn't really intend on doing that. The manuals were are up to four dollars at that junkyard, so that's not too bad. And the connector was two ninety nine, so three bucks for this analog brake wheel hub connector. So uh, can't complain about that. Uh, I'm glad to see that we do have it working. It is definitely improved. But uh, yeah, hopefully. You know, obviously, obviously, if the issue starts to repeat itself, um, there's nothing else I could do with that wiring down there. <laughs> so uh, this was like a one-time thing. If if the problem does continue to to occur, it's gonna have to be a whole hub. Or, like I said, I might just say screw it and let the car live forever uh, for the rest of its life without uh, any ABS or traction control. It's really not that big a deal. But the only reason why I wanted to fix it is because I know the systems work. And if, if there was a possibility that we can get those wires repaired, uh, I was might as well just do it for, you know, what are we really risking? Nothing. I mean, worst case scenario, the, those crimps wouldn't work and I just still have the same problem. So that's it. I'm gonna wrap it up so uh, hope you guys enjoyed this thumbs up comment subscribe if you did and uh, that's it so I will see you guys next time in the meantime thank you so much again for watching and take care